I bought a large sheet of thighs and I'm gonna simmer those with some onion and some celery and a little bit of bouillon and it's gonna be delicious for supper tonight this way we're gonna get some good broth I don't have to fool with the bones all I gotta do is take out the fat and we can have a nice chicken pot pie you can hear the whistle with this cookware it has a steam out the top at this point if you were doing something that you wanted to kind of cook quicker and steam you could close the the, the top like that and it would form a seal but I'm actually just making our chicken and so I'm leaving it open so it's hard to forget you got something on the stove when it's singing to you all right one of my favorite ways to get chicken out of a pot that I have prepared it in for broth or or you know any kind of soup or dumplings or chicken pot pie or Mexican chicken no matter what the purpose I always use two spoons with slots if you don't have a couple of spoons that are slotted get you some you can always get them on our website I reach in here and I just pick them up one at a time this way some of the broth you know can come through because it's slotted and then you just lay it in a pan now these are thighs boneless skinless but they do have some fat on them which made a nice broth it's got some good um, grease on the top plenty of grease actually so you can see that I put in some onion some celery and you'll see that you know come out as I pick these up I always add just one chicken bouillon and I know I don't have to and some people don't like the flavor but I love it um, there is a flavor I don't like and that's pork flavor I know a lot of people love that too and if you like it of course put it in there um, if you don't like it don't frown upon me for liking it you know just don't use it okay so this is all the chicken. The only thing left in the pot now is some really good broth and um, the onions that are in the bottom of the pot. I'm gonna show you that. You can see how nice that looks. All right, today I'm making some gravy for my chicken pot pie. This is butter melting in there. I'm gonna put a little Crisco in here. I'm gonna make a good bit of gravy, so I'm adding a good bit of grease and flour. If you wanna know how to make my gravy, it's in my volume one cookbook, and so is my chicken pot pie. We're putting this together. Um, it's gonna be really delicious. We're gonna be using this for our gravy, and we're gonna be using our broth uh, for the most of the base of the gravy. We'll also add a little milk. I'll put a little milk in it too. Our shortening and our butter has melted. We don't want that butter to burn. I'm gonna go ahead and sift our flour into this. You want it to be kind of a pasty type texture. I'm gonna go ahead and get out my gravy whisk. So you're gonna to wanna to add flour until it turns into almost like a paste. And it doesn't have to be thick, but it does need to be pasty to be good. So you want about equal parts flour to equal parts grease. <laughs> Whatever you're using, okay? That should about do it. Well, it's really close, but it could use a little more. That's how I like for it to be. Almost like you can see the bottom when you scrape it a little. This will make a lot of gravy. I should have used my deep skillet. I'm going to fill it all the way up, y'all. Get ready. We're going to let that brown a little bit. Go ahead and put some salt and pepper in it. Salt. And pepper. Now this is the base to your chicken pot pie. What makes it so good and different than most people's because most people just want to open a can of cream of chicken soup. But I like to make gravy and it makes a big difference. 
And the chicken pot pie, it is so good. I also used pie crusts. This is not anything homemade much except for the gravy, but the rest of it, I use shortcuts, okay? I do not use frozen vegetables because I want them to be nice and soft. I don't like for vegetables to be crunchy in my pot pie. You can use them if you want to, but I would prefer um, if someone made it with frozen vegetables that they would actually boil the vegetables first so that they'd be nice and soft. All right, let's go ahead and start adding our liquid. We're gonna put in some broth first. And now I'm going to put in some milk. And I'm filling it to the rim. So when this stuff starts getting thick, I gotta be fast. So as soon as it starts to thicken, I'm gonna pull it off because it's gonna to continue to get a little bit thick even after that because it'll still be hot. And I don't want it to be so thick that the pie's dry. Looks good. Looks about like I want it. So I'm gonna take this off and put it over here where the heat is not there. All right, this is in our first volume cookbook. I'll be using two ready-made pie crust to get them in the refrigerated section of the grocery store. I'm going to put one in the bottom of my baking dish. And this is a really big baking dish. It's bigger than most, so most of the time I make it in one that it actually fits good in. But tonight, I'm just making a little bit bigger pie. It's not gonna hurt anything to um, put it in here like this. I did not have a couple of cans of mixed vegetables, so I'm actually creating mixed vegetables out of canned vegetables. Why am I doing that? I've already told you why. I don't like to use frozen vegetables and I don't wanna take the time out tonight to boil them first. So I'll be right back once I get these drained and ready for the pie. So I'm gonna start it by putting some of the gravy in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the edges since I didn't have enough pie crust to cover them. I don't want it to stick and be real messy to clean up. So we'll do that right quick. Okay. Now we're just going to put half the gravy in the pan. Now we're gonna put in our chicken. These are the thighs that we made. And I left the darkest meat of the thigh um, out. I'm actually gonna make some doggy. Give it to my puppies. They like to eat fresh chicken like this. And I had plenty for the casserole. And you can see that thigh meat is partially you know, it doesn't look real dark. Parts of it are dark and parts of it are not. So if that's something you don't tend to buy and you see it on sale, then I would suggest you give it a try. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna drain our vegetables and sprinkle them in our dish. You never have too many potatoes. All right, with the green beans, I kind of mashed them up so they wouldn't be in big hunks in here. I probably should have cut up the carrots, but it's too much trouble. So I'm just gonna spread these on the casserole. Okay, typically I am making something in a small enough pan that I have plenty of gravy with one recipe. But tonight, that pan is so big that I brought my gravy back over here 
and added some broth to it, hoping that it will thicken up. So we're just gonna test it out and see if it works. All right, that did the trick. I did add a little bit of cornstarch and some milk and pour in here just to make it nice and pretty and thick. And I just put in some extra pepper and salt. So we're about to go pour this over our pot pie. Now you can bake this for an hour at 350. It's pretty much done. You know, the, the ingredients are pretty much done. You're just trying to get the crust nice and toasted on the bottom and the top. Make sure that you let it sit in there for a while. It takes about an hour to make it good and nice and brown and pretty on the top, okay? I took my pie crust and I rolled it out a little bit thinner so it would fit the shape of this pan a little bit better. My kids love this pot pie, and my husband does too. I'll see y'all in an hour. Let's get it out. I'll get the girls to come in here video so that y'all can watch us do a taste test. Look at that flaky crust. Well, <laughs> it's got crust on the bottom too, so you gotta reach down in there and get it. Good, that's a lot of pie too. Woo! Got Amy to video me because Chris is fishing tonight. Woo, he's gonna have a good supper when he gets home. Look how flaky this crust is, y'all. And I didn't even have to work to make it. Just rolled it out. So easy. And so delish. One woman said she's tired of me saying delicious. I said, Lord. You know what my food is? Delicious. Yummy. It's a winner every time. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Tammy did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.